Hello, and let's begin chapter 3, which is going to cover national income. And in this chapter, we're going to develop a very basic model of the economy and how we think the economy might work in the, in the long run. Okay, and we're going to determine how the amount of national income, which we'll measure using GDP, is determined and how it's distributed. In this first lecture, I'm going to present an overview of the chapter so you have an idea of what's going on. But then we're also going to present an overview or a bird's eye view of the model that we're going to develop in this chapter. Now this is really introductory and you probably won't understand a single thing by the time we're done with this lecture. But it's still really important. The reason why it's important is it's so easy to get lost in all the different puzzle pieces that get put together when we put together an economic model that you lose the, well, what, ir what is it that we're going? In other words, you can't see the forest for the trees. So what we're going to try to do in this lecture is introduce the forest. And then in the subsequent lectures, we'll try to go through and describe each one of the trees. So a brief overview. We have this lecture, which is an overview of lecture two, which is going to look at the supply side, or we're going to particularly look at the production function. In chapter three, or in lecture three, we're going to go through factor markets. Lecture four, we're going to look at the goods side or the demand side of the economy, right? So the goods market. And then finally in lecture five, we'll talk about the loanable funds market and bring everything together. So, brief outline of the model. So we can think of this as aggregate demand, aggregate supply, and then bringing the two together into equilibrium. So we're going to talk about the supply side first, in which case we have factor markets, so supply and demand prices of things like um, labor, capital, stuff we use to produce other stuff. That's what a factor of production is. And then determinants of output, so how much can we produce, and that'll be determined in our, our case by our technology and our level of inputs. Uh, and then, once we do that, we want to know we've got all this income, who gets it? Do the entrepreneurs get it? Do the laborers get it? Do the owners of capital get it? We need to determine how that income is distributed. That takes care of the supply side of this model. Then on the demand side, we want to figure out, well, how much consumption do we want? How much investment are we going to want? How much government spending is there going to be? Now you notice this is a pretty simple model. There isn't going to be a foreign sector, so, so no net exports. So in this model, GDP equals C plus I plus G, and we're leaving off net exports because we're excluding them. Then finally, we're going to bring it all together. We're going to create this thing called the goods market, where producers sell their goods, and the um, buyers, the consumers, buy consumption goods, the investors, right, investment, businesses, buy um, business goods and then governments buy the goods that government buys. And then finally we'll talk about the loanable funds framework and bring in a financial aspect to our economy. Okay, so this looks like a lot and I'm sure you're a little overwhelmed by looking at this from this kind of very very top-down um, perspective, but don't worry about it. We're going to go through each step in detail.